Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church uh, at the SSC Live uh, TV studio. And uh, we're doing another powerful point to ponder. And I want to thank you for being here with us because we're spending every day meaningful moments with the master. We're trying to get our thoughts right, our attitudes right, the way we see things, uh, because you got to see it before you see it or you won't see it. And attitude is everything. Attitude trumps ability. Attitude asks the question, can or will I? But ability asks the questions, can I? And God just wants a willing spirit. And we're looking at a man named Caleb. We started talking about him on Monday. And uh, Caleb was one of those persons who said to the children of Israel, who said, you know what? We can enter into the promised land. I know there are giants over there in the promised land, but we can do it. He has a can-do spirit. Now, 10 spies, you remember, said, no, we cannot do it, that uh, everyone over there is a giant. Don't forget that. Everyone's a giant, and um, they saw us as grasshoppers. No, they didn't see them as grasshoppers. They saw them as conquerors. The problem was, was that the people thought of themselves as grasshoppers. They had internalized their oppression. That's what oppression does to people. See, they had been slaves for 400 years. And although God, by his, by his power, was able to get them out of Egypt, out of oppression, God had a difficult time getting oppression out of them. They internalized their oppression, and they, they began to see themselves as their enemies saw them. You have to be careful not to see yourself the same way your enemy sees you. That is, that is insanity. In fact, you don't need your enemy's affirmation. One of the most liberating days in any person's life is the day that you come to realize, or the person comes to realize, that you do not need people to like you in order for you to be successful. As long as God likes you and you like yourself and you're determined, God's going to get with you and prepare a table before you in the very presence of your enemies. Now, it is a fact that uh, those 10 spies we're not wrong. There were some giants in the land. Not everybody was a giant. That's an over-exaggeration. But there were, in fact, giants in the land. And there will be giants any time that you have to face, any time you are moving upward. You know, when you are jog, if you're a jogger, I jog, and uh, when I jog, if I'm going up a hill, it's difficult because I'm going up. If I'm going down, it's easy. It's always easy when you're going down. But if you want to go up, that's when it is difficult. You will face the giants of gravity as you go up the hill. But notice what Caleb, listen to this guy's attitude, what Caleb's attitude is about these giants. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 9, the King James Version says this. He says, look, only rebel not ye against the Lord. God said, go into the promised land, get it in spite of the giants, and they voted no. That's rebellion. That's rebellion. It was presumption to think they could do it without God. It's rebellion when God says, I'm with you, and they don't do it. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. Fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. They are bread for us. You know what uh, Wheaties', Wheaties uh, motto is? Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. And what Caleb saw was that these, hear me, these giants were bread. Bread is a symbol of nutrition. He's basically saying that this obstacle is nutritional. It's bread for us. It's going to develop us. It's going to make us strong. And the reason why God allows us to face giants and adversity in the university of adversity is because your giants are your bread. Your giants make you strong. Anyone who has matured, who has maximized themselves, self-actualized, are people who in their resume can point to some giants, some obstacles, some problems that help them get there. You don't become a Moses unless you have a desert. You don't become a David 
unless you've been chased by Saul. You don't become a John the Baptist unless you have to face a Herod Agrippa. You don't become a Paul unless you've been faced by those enemies, those Judaizers. You don't, you don't become a Martin Luther King if you don't have a Bull Connors and a, and a, a, a Jim Clark. You, you don't become great without adversity. Your adversity is your bread. It makes you who you are, my brothers and sisters. Potiphar, remember Joseph? Joseph had Potiphar's wife, but it was Potiphar's wife who lied on him, framed him, uh, that helped Joseph become the man he was. Can you be a David if you didn't face a Goliath? Always remember, my brothers and sisters, uh, that whenever you're facing a giant, I don't care what the adversary is, you act like Caleb. He says, only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Somehow, God is going to use this to my, for my advancement. My adversity is for my advancement. It is my bread. It's what makes me strong. It's what grows me. It's what matures me. Sometimes you need to send a thank you note to your adversaries because they unintentionally help you to grow. And, be, and you didn't realize it at the time, but you were eating the breakfast of champions. So whenever you're facing a giant, whatever you do, overcome the feeling, the temptation to feel sorry for yourself. Instead, congratulate yourself because you just are eating your Wheaties. You know, uh, one of the great humanitarians and great tennis players was Arthur Ashe. And Arthur Ashe contracted AIDS through a blood transfusion. And after he contracted AIDS, this wonderful man, brilliant man, uh, social activist, contracted AIDS, someone asked him, well, Arthur, have you ever asked God why? He allowed this to happen. And Arthur asked, classic guy, said, no, I never did ask God why God allowed me to contract AIDS. But I did ask God when I was holding up the plate of the Wimbledon, coming from a segregated city, Richmond, Virginia, when I was holding up the plate because I had won the Wimbledon, I asked God, God, why me? Usually when we're facing giants and problems, we feel sorry for ourselves and say, God, why me? But Arthur Ashe reversed it, and when he was won the Wimbledon, he said, God, why have you been so good to me? So instead of looking at your giants and saying, God, why do I have the giants? Why me? Go back over your life and look at not your giants, but your gains. All the ways God has caused you to gain new territory. And ask yourself, God, why have you been so good to me? Because if you look at your giants and if you look at your gains, and we all have giants, but we all have gains. And if you compare them, I promise you that God's gains in your life greatly overwhelm the giants that you've had to face in your life. Don't forget, whatever you're facing, even if you don't like it, Caleb said, they are bread for us. And the bread of adversity in the university of adversity makes us, makes us champions. It's the, it's the breakfast of champions. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, all of us have adversity, but all of us have some advancement. So help us to focus on the advancement and not the adversity, and help us to see that it is through adversity that we have advancement, that our adversaries are, is, is bread for us. It's the breakfast of champions. Help us to be patient in the process and to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Thank you again for being with me on another powerful point to ponder. And uh, uh, we say this every day. It's very important. If you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church home. Everybody needs to be connected with a church. And I'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. You don't have to live in Louisville to be connected, just like you don't have to be here in, at St. Stephen Church to hear the word because we're doing it virtually. And you can become a virtual member of the church, a digital disciple. Just contact us uh, at New Start. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We'd love to have you. Just contact us, and if you need some information about the church or if you need somebody to talk to, contact us. We'll get back with you. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Another powerful point to ponder. This is Wednesday. Don't forget, uh, tonight we start our first Bible study of the year, and I hope you'll join us and be with us. The pre-worship experience begins at 630 with Miss Crystal and Friends, and then I'll be back tonight at 7 o'clock and got a, a word for you I'd like to share with you Wednesday night, tonight. God bless you. Appreciate you so much. And as we close out, don't forget what we say every day, and that is during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and if possible, stay home. God bless you. See you tonight in Bible study. <laughs>